Hello and welcome back to EGMG's YouTube channel. We're so glad you could join us here for our new system series video. This is um, our second video in our series. And in this series, you're going to find information and videos on different types of systems that we have to offer. You've already seen our powder mixing systems. We've talked a bit about our CIP and COP systems. And today we're going to discuss pasteurization systems. And what we want you to know is that you can get all of your pasteurization systems and components from one place here at Iris Grove Management Group. In recent years, pasteurization has become the go-to for extending the shelf life of beverages and products by slowing the growth of those microbes while not entirely killing them off. So the daily volume of pasteurized beverages or products is going to determine whether HTSC pasteurization or VAT pasteurization is going to be the best method for you and your manufacturing facility. So let's talk about some products that you might want to think about pasteurizing. So pasteurization can be applied to both packaged and unpackaged solids and liquids, including here, but not limited to these products such as beer and wine, canned goods, dairy products, liquid eggs like egg beaters, different fruit juices and ciders, nuts, nut butters, um, syrups and vinegars, your sauerkrauts, your kimchi, any of those commercially sour uh, pickle products, kombucha is another example, um, lemon juice, flour, different types of canned lobster meat and crab meat. These are just some of the options of items that you might want to think about pasteurizing in order to prolong that shelf life. So let's talk about the different pasteurization systems. Up first is going to be a vat pasteurizer or vat pasteurization. Now this is going to be for those smaller batch products that you might have. It's really one of the most effective methods because you're going to have that jacketed stainless steel vat and you're going to be able to produce these small capacities of products. And if you don't have a lot of product to constantly um, run on the fly, you wouldn't need a larger system. This would be the best system for you. So let's discuss some of those components. So with a vat pasteurization system, you're going to have an inlet line, those lines feeding in to this vat pasteurizer. So the inlet line is designed to run the product down the side of the vat, which is going to reduce the development of foam during the pasteurization process. The line really should be disconnected from the vat after that to prevent any contamination of the product during or after the pasteurization. So there are also going to be different covers that will fit your vat pasteurizers. So the covers of the vat pasteurizers are constructed to prevent the entrance of the surface of the contamination. So we wouldn't want anything contaminated eliminating that entrance there to your vat, such as those foreign materials or anything of that nature. Now the jacket around the vat, the vat pasteurizer jacket is going to be double walled and it's going to be that space between the walls that will circulate your steam or your heating coils, your water, whatever it is that you're using to heat up your pasteurizer. Now inside you're going to have your agitators. Agitators are designed to keep milk or any other product moving at all times and by running it constantly during the pasteurization cycle. This is going to result in a uniformed product product and a uniform temperature throughout the vat. Now the most efficient agitators are actually going to push the product down while sweeping it against that heat exchange surface on the sides and the bottom of the vat. Now the agitator shafts must be fitted to give you that effective uh, drip deflection shields to prevent any contamination of the product. Now we also want to discuss airspace thermometers. You're going to want to measure and record that um, airspace in your vat. We want to make sure that the temperature of the airspace of the product above the vat is correct. So along with that, you're going to need thermometers that are going to indicate those temperatures. And then we want to talk about chart recorders to record these different temperatures in the vat or of the product itself. So the recording thermometer is going to provide you a record of your pasteurization cycle, the heat treatment, different temperatures in the airspace and in the actual tank to include that holding point time. So you might be interested in airspace heaters. An airspace heater is going to typically um, use as an electric boiler with a steam trap that's going to filter uh, to produce culinary steam. And it is going to maintain the minimum airspace temperatures you would require in that vat. Along with that, you might need valves, inlet and outlet valves of your past 
Pasteurizer are normally constructed of stainless steel and EGMG has a number of valves that we can offer you here. So it's going to prevent that um, accumulation of unpasteurized product to different parts of your equipment. So that's a little bit about the VAT pasteurization system. Now let's talk about the HTST pasteurizer. HTSC stands for high temperature short time pasteurizer. It's going to be pasteurization on the fly, continuously pasteurizing, and it allows for concurrent bottling operations. It's just one smooth motion. This is a very high energy efficient system. It can accommodate those larger volume volumes you might have in your facility, and it carries minimal risk of damage to the product as well as the equipment when you are pasteurizing. It is easy to clean and easy to sterilize, especially if you're using a CIP system, which you can go back and check out in our previous videos in this playlist. So let's discuss some of the components that go into an HTSC pasteurizer. So you're going to have your balance tank first. That's going to maintain the head for the incoming product going through your pasteurization system. You're going to need pumps to generate the pressure for the efficient flow through your entire system, along with a flow control panel. This is going to ensure the efficient amount of fluid is present in the conduits at all times. Now, depending on your product, you might want clarifiers or filters. They're going to remove dirt from your product or debris that might end up inside your lines. Now, if you're processing any type of dairy, you're, you might want a homogenizer, a homogenizer needed for certain dairy products, which is going to prevent the separation in the standing milk by dividing the fat globules into the microglobules. So if you're doing dairy, you might want a homogenizer. Now, as you go through the system, the next up is going to be your plate heat exchanger with regeneration. So heating and holding and cooling sections of these plates are going to allow for your more and most efficient pasteurization. Along with that, you're going to want your flow diversion valves because if something is not heated properly, it can flow divert it right back through the system to make sure that you're maintaining a high quality product. Ensure all pasteurization conditions, you know, have been fulfilled, you'll want that flow diversion valve. And then along with that, you have your conduits and your piping systems that allows the movements of all of your products from one location to another without the risk of contamination. And going back to that plate heat exchanger, we talked about the heating and the cooling ice builders if you need a cool or cooler temperature you would need some type of ice cooling system or an ice builder for cold water or cooling needs and then we have different utilities such as compressed air steam um, water required for the heating like we just talked about you're going to want to think about those different components that will create the steam or create the hot air uh, for that type of plate heat exchanger. Along with that, we have instrumentation and control equipment. To improve your system's efficiency and dependability, you're going to want to have the best controls so that you can have a product that you know is going to be monitored and will pass all the standards and tests possible. Plus, we do offer spare repair. Uh, equipment and spare parts to have on hand so that you're not going to have any downtime. So if you're in need of any of those components, reach out to us. Um, we just introduced you to these two different systems, kind of a smaller batch system and a larger on the fly system. If you need replacement components, if you are in the need of an actual system itself, please reach out to us today because we can work closely with our system integrator or even an OEM and their system design or to provide you with either of these pasteurization systems that we talked about today. Our contact information is on the screen and we look forward to hearing from you. We'll catch you in our next video. Goodbye.